Hey, what's up guys? Jamie Calloway here. And I know the title says something about rare diseases. Now, I wanted to talk about this because I've talked a lot about it, a lot about it on Skype with friends. And I thought maybe I would talk about different things that I was interested in. And this channel is not just for wrestling it could be about other things plus it's my backup channel Jamie Loves Taker so yeah um, if you're not interested in this then just click out of the video I thought I would just explain my thoughts and what the disease is and maybe some ideas on how to cure it I mean I'm not a scientist but I don't know I just want to know if you guys have heard of these diseases or know anybody now do not make fun of any of these kids have these diseases because it's not funny any rude comments will be deleted all right now I have to warn you the pictures do look like wow are they actually from this planet but they're humans and they're just babies with a condition that they were born with and I'll name three diseases right now I'll show you pictures and also all links if you want to see people who are living with this this disease these diseases links are in the description there's a documentary on a girl who has this skin disease there is this disease that is a rapid aging disease and um, he was on ESPN so links and information on the disease are also in the description and yes, so I will talk about these diseases now. Um, first disease is progeria. Second one is harlequin ichthyosis. And the other one I'm not sure how to pronounce is anencephaly. And, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce. I know how to pronounce progeria, but I'm not sure about the skin disease either. Now progeria is an accelerating aging disease. You rapidly age. Um, kids with the disease normally don't live past 13. They usually die. And some even die really young because I was looking at videos where people had, where kids had these diseases. And one of, the, one of his name was Zachary and he only lived to three years old. Um, basically what it is, is it is a rapid aging disease and they're basically a little kid stuck in a old person's body and it stops your growth it stops your it stops your weight um, I know one video I was watching where this kid was only 15 pounds and was 27 inches tall he's six years old and he's about equal to a 60 year old so one year is equal to like 10 years old so if you're like six you're basically 60 years old these kids get arthritis, they get strokes, they get heart problems. They get anything an old person would experience as an elderly person. These kids experience as a child because of their condition. Now they begin to lose their hair and they get and that's why they're so skinny and, and short is because of this disease. Now I'll read to you some of these what their definition is there is no known cure for this disease the only treatment is to affect the symptoms you get and you just have to live out your life with this disease there is a person diagnosed with progeria his name is Josiah link in the description to that video um, this definition is progeria is also known as Something Guilford progeria syndrome is an extremely rare genetic condition wherein symptoms resemb resembling aspect of aging are manifested at an early age. This disorder has very low um, cases and occurs in one per eight million births. So it's a very rare disease. I forget which disease it is, but it's like either it's harlequin ichthyosis or it's this disease there's 50 kids 53 kids roll around 
worldwide with this disease, and there's like 10 or 15 kids in the whole United States of America who has this disease. So is, it is an extremely rare disease. Now next, oh, I'll show you a picture, so here you go. So next disease is, well, before I get onto that, I really feel bad for the kids who have these diseases because I really hope they find a cure for this disease, but I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's possible to exactly cure it. I think that they have to find, you have to find the cause before you can find the cure because it wouldn't make any sense just to go and try to cure it if you don't know what causes it. So I think what they need to do is, well, I don't know because I'm not a scientist, but find the cause and try to reduce the aging. I mean, you don't want to stop them from aging completely, but they, ex they, they rapidly age. Maybe if you can reduce that and and maybe maybe prevent it from happening. I don't know. A lot of these diseases, you should try to if you find the cause, try to prevent. Or, and if it does happen, try to find the cause. So, next disease is Harlequin ichthyosis. Now, Harlequin ichthyosis is a very rare genetic skin condition. It's like one of those one in a million births. And they really do look, they really do look really strange. So, please don't make fun of these kids. Now, they develop deep cracks in their skin and their eyes turn inside out and they're vulnerable to infections and dehydration dehydration because the skin can't protect itself like our skin can um, and I'll read to you what is harlequin ichthyosis? harlequin ichthyosis is a very severe genetic disorder that mainly affects the skin infants with this condition are born with very hard, thick skin covering most of their bodies. The skin forms large diamond-shaped plates that are separated by deep cracks, fissures. Their skin abnormalities affect the shape of the eyelids, nose, mouth, and, and ears, and limit movement of the arms and legs. Restricted movement of the chest can lead to breathing difficulties and respiratory failure. The skin normally... All right, now listen to this. The skin normally folds a protective barrier between the body and its surrounding surrounding environment. So your skin protects you, obviously. The skin abnormalities associated with Harlequin ichthyosis disrupt this barrier, making it more difficult for a, a affected infants to control water loss, regulate their body temperature, and fight infections. Infants with Harlequin ichthyosis often experience an excessive loss of fluids and develop life-threatening infections in the first few weeks of life. It used to be very rare for affected infants to survive the newborn period. However, with intensive medical support and improved treatment, people with this disorder now have a better chance of living into childhood and adolescence. Um, there is, oh, before I move on, there's no treat, oh no, never mind, I already said this for progeria. There's no treatment, no, there is a treatment for it, but there's no cure for it. They can only treat the symptoms. They can't treat the rapid aging. For this, now, I will show you a picture in a minute, but you can't cure this disease. You can only treat it. Um, any symptoms that comes along with it, you can treat. And I don't think there's any way to treat what they look like at birth. You just have to make sure they're not going to be dehydrated, you have to make sure they won't be vulnerable to any infections. And with the right medical support, they'll be able to live into ch their childhood and adolescence. But what they look like at birth is not what they look like when they grow up. I'll show you a person who was born with it, a baby at birth, and then one that lives. Their skin looks very pink when they get older. But they, they do not look what they do at birth. So I don't think you can do anything when they're born except make sure it's not dehydrated or it's vulnerable to any infections. Now, um, what I've seen in documentaries, 
is I have a video of the girl that has Harlequin ichthyosis. She's like 15 or 16 years old now. She has to rub like skin cream all over her and it and it helps her skin. And she has to they all have to take tons of baths every day. They have to soak in it for an hour because it helps their skin because this disease um you know affects their temperature and water loss and everything. They have to eat twice the amount of food that normal kids would. And she's a little shorter than everyone else. It also has to it also stops their growth. So she's not growing as normal as um, other people are. She's a lot shorter than all the teenagers. I'm short myself, but I don't have Harlequin ichthyosis. So, um, it's like one in a million births. Um, what causes this disease is there's no known cause for it. I don't think there's a cause for it. And there's no cure for it. And it has to do with, with, um, it's a mutation in the genes. A lot of these, these three diseases probably have to do with genetics. All right, so I'm just gonna read this to you. Mutations in the ABCA12 gene cause Harlequin ichthyosis. The ABCA12 gene provides instruction for making a protein that is essential for the normal development of the skin cells. So that plays a very important role that's what it affects but they don't know exactly what causes it if you know what I mean so here's a picture of the baby at birth with Harlequin and when the baby grows up so a baby with I don't know how to pronounce this disease but it is anencephaly it's a neural tube defect, but before I get to that, I wanted to explain about Harlequin ichthyosis a little more. Um, m what I think they could do is, obviously they have to find why, what causes it. But what I think is, like, obviously they can't do anything for the baby at birth. They just have to make sure it doesn't get infected or anything. Or maybe they can find a way to prevent it, or somehow help the development of skin, of the skin. I don't know how, but if the baby is born with it, maybe they can find a type of cream that actually helps cure the disease. And maybe you have to put it on every day. Maybe you won't fully cure it, but maybe it can, you know, get it to the point where the child doesn't really have it anymore. I think these kids with these diseases will always have it. It's just, I don't think it'll be 100% cured, but hopefully they will be able to find the cause and then a cure for this. I'm not sure about the prognosis of this disease. They can treat it, but they can't cure it. With progeria, they're, they can treat your symptoms, but they can't cure it. And with this disease, anencephaly, it's really sad. It's a really sad disease. What is anencephaly? My bad, I don't know how to pronounce these diseases. Anencephaly is a defect in the closure of the neural tube during fetal development. The neural tube is a narrow channel that folds and closes between the third and fourth week of pregnancy to form the brain and spinal cord of the embryo. What happens is it's a defect and, you know, the development of the head doesn't close all the way. So the baby is born with only a, um, a brain stem. And what happens is the child is born with like a, basically a hole in it, in its head. And... It, the child is there, but the mind is just, if you know what I mean, not there. Um, I'll read a little more about this. Anencephaly occurs when the cephalic or head end of the neural tube fails to close, resulting in the absence of a major portion of the brain, skull, and scalp. Infants with the disorder are born with a forebrain, the front part of the brain, and a cerebrum, the thinking and coordinating part of the brain. The remaining brain tissue is often exposed, not covered by bone or skin. A baby born with anencephaly is usually blind, deaf, unconscious, and unable to feel pain. Although some individuals with anencephaly may be born with a 
with a rum dare uh, sorry I don't know how to pronounce this word brainstem the lack of a functioning cerebrum permanently rolls out the possibility of ever gaining consciousness reflex actions such as breathing and responses to sound or touch may occur the cause of anencephaly is unknown so you have to find the cause before the cure and I don't think there's any way to cure this disease because you can't just sprout a brain in their head I think the best way is prevention Whatever they find causes this disease or find out or why, what, like, how would you have a higher risk of having a baby with these, with this disease? Maybe you can try to lessen your chance, you know, prevention. And maybe they can predict what babies are going to have the disease. And if there's any way, maybe they can help the development of the brain or maybe get medicine to help the development or or the or if it's obviously going to happen and they can't do anything about it unless they have a cure maybe they can try to try to prevent it from you know failing to close maybe they can find a way to help the brain close and if the baby is born with that maybe they can do a brain transplant or i'm not sure how they would treat this disease there's no way to treat it except to keep them on maybe a ventilator because a lot of other problem, problems come along with it because you need your brain. Your brain controls everything. There is no treatment. The, what is the prognosis? There is no prognosis for this disease. It is quite sad. But research supported by the NINDS includes studies to understand how the brain and nervous system normally develop. These studies contribute to a greater understanding of neural tube disorders such as anencephaly and op open and promising new avenues to treat and pre prevent neurological birth defects. I think the only way you could cure this disease is probably by preventing it or again trying to help trying to help get rid of the disease, you know, lessen the chance of a baby ever being born with that. That's what I think they should do and it says Recent studies have shown that the addition of folic acid, vitamin B9, in the diet of a woman of childbearing age may significantly reduce the incidence of neural tube defects. Therefore, it is recommended that all women of childbearing age consume 0.4 mg of folic acid daily. Maybe they can use folic acid to help the brain or give, give a lot of parents that are at risk to having a child like that give them a lot of foods that have folic acid in it or I'm not good at science but I'm just trying to give my opinion so I hope they find a lot of cures for these diseases and I really hope they find the obviously maybe find treatments when they're when they're trying to find the cure because if you think about it you're like oh it's just a rare disease you know, not everyone has it, but if you add up everyone in the world that has a rare disease, rare diseases affect a lot of people, despite being rare. And a lot of these diseases are linked together because they have to do a lot with genetics. So maybe if you find find out about one disease, you find what treats the disease, what causes it, maybe it's linked to other ones that you can help cure along the way. Now here is what an acephaly baby looks like. They, again, they don't, they, they're they usually blind, deaf, and unable to feel any pain. So basically they're, basically if they breathe or cry or suckle or eat or whatever, it's only a reflex. It's not like they're actually there. It all, anything they do, all it is is a reflex. So basically their mind's not there. Literally it's not there. They're just there. And everything they do is just a reflex. They normally don't live past a day. They There have been some cases that live only for months. And there's a baby that is two years old and it has this disease. And he responds to the mother and and to touch. But it's again, it's all a reflex. It's not like he's actually there. And the oldest baby lived about 12 years old. And then there was a baby called Baby K. It was the longest baby to be kept alive with this disease. So here's here's the disease.
and all links are in the description of this of all these diseases if you want to read more about it in videos so thank you for watching tell me your opinion